Good evening, Your Excellency, the Director of the Royal Academy of the Fine Arts of San Fernando, Your Excellency, Honorary Member of the Academy, Mr. Richard Driehaus, Your Excellency, Mr. Robert Adam, Your Excellency, fellow members of the Academy, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the Real Academia de San Fernando. It's a great honor for me to chair the ceremony, the award-giving ceremony of the Rafael Manzano Prize of New Traditional Archite Architecture in its eighth edition, as well as the ceremony of presentation of the Richard Driehaus Heritage Preservation Medal. Thanks to INBAO, International Network of Traditional Building Architecture and Urbanism. Thanks to Mr. Richard Driehaus. Charitable Lead Trust and the construction company Calam. I would like to thank also the Ecava Foundation the Serra Enriquez Foundation, the Consejo Superior de Arquitectos de España, Hispania Nostra, and of course, the Royal Academy of the Fine Arts of San Fernando, and uh, its member, Rafael Manzano, architect from Cadiz, who has made it possible for us to gather here today and to contribute to the protection of traditional architectural heritage. Session now is open. I would like to give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Robert Adam, the German president of Inbau. Gracias. Thank you and good evening. Thank you, Your Highness, the Duke of Calabria, director and members of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Academy for hosting once again the Rafael Manzano Prize Award ceremony. As the chairman of the jury of this award, I would like to point out that this is very important for the promotion and the defense of traditional architecture and urbanism. This year, we're also, we also have a new award that rewards the um, work in the area of heritage. It is important to realize that restoration is in but a companion to new traditional work. In fact, these activities overlap each other even though they are essentially different. So this year we have two pairs of winners. We have two Antonios who are the winners of the Richard Driehaus Heritage Preservation Medal. I must say that Antonio Maria Braga and Alberto Castro Nunes, winners of uh, the Rafael Manzano Prize, and Antonio Almagro and Antonio Jimenez, winners of the medal, are absolutely worthy of this honor. I'd like to thank all of the members of the jury. I'm not going to read their names. It's a long list. You know who you are anyway. I'd like to thank you for your patience, for your wisdom, and uh, your stimulating debates. None of these would have been possible without the hard work of Carl Wyand uh, from the Drehound Foundation, Harriet Wengberg from Inbau, Alejandro Garcia Hermida and his team, Maria Brañas and her team, Natalia Escalada and her team, Irene Perez Porro and her team. These institutions <coughs> have all collaborated in this initiative, the ECAVA Foundation, the uh, Foundation Serra Enrique and Enriquez, and finally, Espania Nostra. Finally, I would like to point out the extreme 
relevance of recognizing and acknowledgement and acknowledging the support and continuous inspiration that we have received from Rafael Manzano Martos and above all the generosity and enthusiasm of Richard Driehaus, a truly great man and a defender of the cause of traditional architecture and urbanism at many different levels and in many different countries. So thank you very much. The now honorary member of the Royal Academy of Fine Arts of San Fernando, His Excellency, Mr. Mr. Richard Drehaus has the floor. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow members of the Academy, members of the jury, and representatives of the institution collaborating with us on these initiatives. Today, we recognize and celebrate for the first time in this annual summer ceremony, two different works. One honored with the Raphael Manzano Prize for New Traditional Architecture, and one honored with the new Richard H. Driehaus Heritage Preservation Award. The Heritage Preservation Medal was created as a companion to the Manzano Prize. It will recognize entrepreneurs, developers, and heads of foundations or institutions who are preserving and building upon heritage and architectural traditions in Spain and Portugal. It is often forgotten that any significant work of architecture and urban design cannot take place without the special vision and commitment of an equally significant patron or institution. In the recipients of the first medal, we find a clear example of the complexity of such accomplishments. Thanks to the steady work and forces of several individuals from different institutions, a model outcome was achieved. An entire town, all bath raw in, was saved. From progressive ruin and depopulation, nearly 50 years of dedicated and heroic efforts turn Abba Rashtin into one of the liveliest, most beautiful, and successful towns in the region. The key players behind the remarkable transformation are Antonio Amagro and Antonio Jimenez. Antonio Amagro began working there in the early 70s. He undertook structural repairs of the numerous decayed buildings and then reconstruction of key monuments such as the old medieval walls. He developed exemplary methodology that included creating regulatory tools to discourage demolition of existing buildings, encouraging adaptive use, reviving local traditional building crafts, and encouraging local production of traditional building materials to help revitalize the economy and keep the integrity of the place. Late in the 1990s, Antonio Jimenez and Santa Maria Albarathin pronounced the me for prayer. I'll see these things wrong. Would take up the cause. 
The foundation not only continued the important work started by Antonio and Monroe, but expanded its scope. These include adding cultural programming and also creates jobs and entertainment for the local community. Additionally, managing and maintaining the town's architectural heritage. I wish many Spanish and Portuguese towns could follow the example of these great individuals. Equally remarkable are the accomplishments of our 2019 Anzano Prize awardees. Portuguese, Portuguese architects, Antonio Maria Raga and Alberto Castro Nunes. They began collaborating in the mid 1980s. This was a time when Portuguese legislation practically forbid buildings with any material other than reinforced concrete. Their desire to use more traditional materials became a constant exploration of new ways to convey additional solidarity, functionality, and harmony to their work. This led the recovery of Portuguese architectural traditions. Their focus was mainly on public buildings, community spaces, and local institutions, such as libraries, schools, and museums. Their masterful use of classical and vernacular forms is filled with creativity and originality. Each represents a manifesto on civic education, respect for the character of the place, humanism, and dedication to the community. In doing so, they help heal the urban fabric, returning balance to local environments and culture. It is my hope the Manzano Prize will encourage Antonio and Alberto and others to continue the difficult but crucial work. Thank you for joining us on this happy occasion. Thank you. Architect and member of the jury, Mr. Leon Creer will read the laudatio of the winners. And a uh, very rare pleasure to see contemporary architecture, modern architecture, not hurting you or hurting our towns. Now, the interesting story about these films, which Irene has produced now, starting with uh, Rafael Manzano, is that each film is like a small lesson in a theme of architecture and urbanism, of an architecture which is not violent. Now imagine that, for me, the most important principle to judge an architect's work is to think what if these architects had not just done this house, but this whole district, town district, if they had designed the whole town, the whole province, the whole country, the whole continent. What then? Can you imagine any of the star architects designing the entire world nowadays? We are the lucky people who have still the chance to live in fragments of a world which has disappeared. And Alberto and Antonio, when they left School of Architecture, they realized that they had learned nothing 
to do architecture which would complement this beautiful world which we were born into. Now, it is unimaginable that you know, the damage which could have been avoided if the entire country of Portugal had been repaired, reconstructed, complemented, and corrected that way. Instead, they have very little work. The extraordinary thing is that, and it is extraordinary in the whole of Europe, and it's an extraordinary in the whole series of prizes which Richard H. Drias had, has attributed, has awarded, is that almost none of the architects who have so far been awarded has done public work, has done schools as they have done, has the justice palaces, museums, uh, public buildings, town halls, because this kind of architecture has been castigated as something which must not be done, is treated in architectural schools as something which can only be learned as history, not as technology. And that is where I think they triumph, because when you follow what, what they say and you slow down, and you read actually what they say if you don't understand Portuguese, it's a lesson in what should be done. Because, and that is, I think, the message of the Richard H. Drias Prize, is that we are in a world of extreme crisis and generally citizens, people, who are concerned about the environment and culture and language and music, they don't know in how far there are choices in architecture. That architecture doesn't have all to be boxes and Bauhaus and Mies van der Rohe and crazy Frank Gehry stuff. That there is a reasonable way of building today, technologically correctly, ecological and sustainably, and beautiful, so people like it without being forced to explain to and lecture to. So I think it's an extraordinary uh, situation that, uh, if you imagine that, for instance, the architecture of Europe, we have studied the architecture built by the European Union. All the buildings done by the European Union are just horrible, are the expression of a futureless architecture, of unsustainability, and the bureaucracy and the technocracy. Can you imagine any of the great European buildings representing the Parliament or the Commission or the, in Luxembourg, Brussels, or Strasbourg being done that way? So I think it's, it's not just a <clears throat> pleasure to honor these people, but maybe it's a sign that actually things are changing. And that's at least my hope. Thank you very much. His Excellency Richard Drehaus now will present the award. Los arquitectos, don Antonio. 
Architects, Antonio María Braga and Alberto Castro Núñez have the floor now. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's a great honor to receive this award as a strong incentive to continue our journey and pursue our struggle for traditional architecture. First of all, we would like to thank Richard Driehaus as a generous philanthropist who has always supported this award and others dedicated to the appreciation of classical and vernacular architecture. And Rafael Manzano for associating his wisdom and magnificent work with the denomination of the award. We also thank His Su Alteza Real, Don Pedro de Bourbon, Don Sicilia, Duque de Calabria, the director of Ser Enrique's Foundation, Rita Pinto Coelho, the director of the Royal Academy of Bellas Artes, the San Fernando, Fernando Teran, and the president of ECABA Foundation, Ramon Mayo. And we warmly thank the members of the jury headed by Robert Adam for recognizing the value of our architecture and our roots. We would also like to greet some of our customers who become our friends during the construction process of our works. Mayors and directors of institutions who trusted in our work and bet on the vernacular and classical architecture we propose in our projects. Notably, Justino Santos and Antonio Camilo from Odmira, the late Bernardo Costa and José Manuel Costa from the Portuguese Cinematheque, José Cardin and Teresa Simões from Odrinhas Museum, and Norberto Patino and José Manuel Grillo from Portel. And we would like also to greet two of our colleagues with whom we have exchanged ideas and experiences over time, Colin Mullen and Diru Tadani, who strongly supported us in the application for this award. <laughs> Lastly, we want to specially thank someone we consider our master and mentor, Leon Krier, who has guided and inspired us over the years. This award values exactly what is important to us in architecture and encourages the struggle to preserve the historic city and to publicize the importance of traditional architecture as a mean of historical continuity. Now we will see a video about the work of the architect and member of the Academy, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Almagro and Mr. Antonio Jimena, the winners of the first Richard H. Driehaus um, Heritage Preservation Medal. Member of the Royal Academy of Fine Arts of San Fernando, His Excellency, Mr. Rafael Manzano Martos will now read the laudatio of the winners of the medal. With your permission, Your Highness, dear Excellencies, dear Richard Drehaus, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, in their efforts to lead to perfection, the stimulus to achieve an architecture that is supported by the classical canons without giving up on modernity that is integrated seamlessly 
with the heritage of Spanish cities and towns, Richard Rehaus and his uh, team wanted to add to the set of seminars, prizes, and architectural competitions which have been added on to the initial Rafael Manzano Prize, decided to create a new award, the Richard Rehaus Heritage Promotion Medal, rewarding efforts to save an architectural, urban, or landscaping environment in our damaged geography. This new medal emphasizes and rewards patronage and good taste, very much forgotten these days, with which some entrepreneurs or private individuals have invested or worked on the salvage and conservation of monumental ensembles. I acknowledge the opportunity given to me to design the medal, which incorporates some explicit souvenirs of my years of work at Medina Zara, which fully coincide with the photogrammetric work made free of charge by the first recipient of this medal, Antonio Almagro, on that archaeological site. These medals have been awarded to the work to recover the monumental ensemble of Albarracin, the modest capital of the smallest emirate that made up the Reinos, the Taifas of Al-Andalus in Muslim Spain in the, ninth, in the ninth century that disseminated the culture of the Cordoba Caliphate and multiplied it in a thousand different ways. The Spain of Mutamid of Seville, the Spain of Al Mamun of Toledo, of Moctadir of Zaragoza, of Badiz Ben Habud in Granada, of Mutawakil in Badajoz or Jairán in Almería. The same old Hispania, which, <clears throat> broken in a thousand small mirrors of itself, was in its Christian version the Spain of El Cid, of Alfonso VI of Castile, the conqueror of, of Toledo, of Alfonso I of Aragon, the conqueror of Zaragoza, of the counties of Catalonia, and also that of Alfonso Enriquez, the conqueror of Lisbon. This was the magical moment in which the fragmented tableau of the Iberian Peninsula would forge the historical personality of Spain. And Albarracin is its symbol, located in a crossroads between the north and the south, the east and the west. And the west, it preserves its Christian Mozarabe name, Santa Maria de los Banu Razin, under the Islamic rule, after the Christians recovered the town and it became an Episcopal town, its name evolved into Albarracin as an eternal remembrance of the Cunha of its Muslim emirs. In that unique, picturesque, and neglected location, after losing its strategic value, an unforgettable friend of mine, Martin Almagro Bash, bought a beautiful family home from which he supervised the secrets of Spanish archaeology as if he was perched atop an eagle's nest and where two of his many children spent their childhood, Martin, archaeologist, and Antonio, whom we are honoring today, the architect who dedicated his life to the history and restoration of Spanish architecture. After passing an exam whose jury I had the honor of uh, presiding, he started working at the School of Arab Studies in Granada, restorer and scientific researcher, expert photogrammetrist. His extensive work as a student of the architecture of universal Islam led him to gain membership in our academy. However, way before these achievements, he never forgot the family home of Albarracin, whose systematic arrangement as the perfect model of a small medieval city he practiced since his early years when he worked for the National Heritage Protection Service, 
of the Department of Fine Arts. Judging from the master plan of the city he designed himself, we can observe the synthesis of the beauty achieved by Antonio using very modest means, but with a profound knowledge and a steady hand. He started his work, this work, in 1971, right after he graduated as an architect. Later, from 1970 to 1984, he resumed his work as the inspecting architect of monuments of Aragon, to which this area, area of Teruel was attached to. His initial interventions focused on the structural consolidation and the replacement of roofs to prevent the complete ruin of the ensemble, inaccessible, inaccessible and protected by strong but damaged walls. He also took care of the surrounding landscape, irrigated by the upper Guadiana, the wide river of the Muslims. Additionally, Antonio drafted a regulation that prevented the demolition of buildings in ruins. And collaborated in their consolidation, which made it possible for their owners to restore them and reuse them as housing. His patient and persistent work during those 10 years achieved the total recovery and regeneration of the historical area, respecting the volumes, spans, carpentry, and ligneous structures using traditional materials and construction techniques, stone, wood, and the unique local red gypsum. This very tough material, impermeable and elastic, that accepts the movements of the lignose elements, forced Antonio Almagro to promote the recovery of the old kilns to produce it, resulting in savings and quality of finishing and authentic results. During that time, the profile of the wall was also recovered, giving back to the city its primitive silhouette. When he had to move to Granada as a researcher for the CSIC, the Higher Council of Scientific Research, the Foundation Santa Maria del Barracín took over his work. This foundation was established in 1996 and whose director was Antonio Jiménez Martínez, the creator of two trade schools that trained specialized labor and created many new jobs. They restored the old Episcopal Palace, seats of the foundation, the conference center, and the diocesan museum. There, even the socks and the slippers of the bishop recreate the human aspects of the past Episcopal life in Albarracín. These first works were the basis and the rehearsal for the establishment of an integral action program. The foundation has acted along three main lines. The restoration of property and fixtures in Albarracín, the continuous programming of activities to revitalize the population, including concerts, exhibitions, and conferences, and training courses, using its own residences built on rehabilitated buildings. The third line of action is the integral management of this heritage and its maintenance. This is what we are universally recognizing today. Thanks to the strong hand, the dedication and enthusiasm of their creators, Antonio Almagro and Antonio Jimenez, the Richard Rehouse Charitable Lead Trust, through this Real Academia de Bellas Artes de San Fernando, wish to honor them with the, its first commemorative medal, the Foundation of Santa Maria del Barracín, a guarantee for the continuity in the future of this extraordinary urban setting, a unique example of the Spanish Middle Ages. Excelentísimo Señor Don Richard. Mr. Richard Rehouse will now present the award.
el académico y arquitecto, excelentísimo señor Don Antonio. Member of the Academy and Architect. Antonio Jiménez tiene la palabra. His Excellency, Mr. Antonio Almagro and Antonio Jiménez have the floor. Your Highness, Director, members of the Academy, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank this award very sincerely, and I'd like to thank the different individuals and institutions who have participated in this decision, the jury, the uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Richard Rehouse and his uh, and the uh, Richard Rehouse Charitable, Charitable Lead Trust for the generous patronage. I must confess that uh, I'm thinking now of my youth right after I graduated as an architect and I had to face a very different situation to that that was that I came across at the School of Architecture when due to family reasons I had to take over my first rehabilitation work in Albarracina, I came across construction materials and techniques which had nothing to do with everything that I had learned in the School of Architecture. I would like to thank the masons and artisans who still remembered the traditional ways of doing things and they taught me how to do it. And they raised my curiosity for a material like gypsum, which was not very often used in modern construction, despite its many advantages. And I have re uh, carried out a great deal of research on the use of gypsum in construction throughout many years. Those masters of the past and those who still believe in the quality of the traditional ways of construction and work hard to preserve this heritage. And to all of those who wanted to be with us today in this event, thank you very much. Mr. Antonio Jiménez has the floor now. Your Excellencies, thank you very much for thinking of Antonio Almagro and myself, because thinking of us means thinking about Albarracín, and this is really a great satisfaction to me. I'd like to thank the members of the jury for the decision. I would like to thank all of the staff of the Richard Rehouse Charitable Lead Trust. It has been a pleasure to be with you these days. It has really been a great pleasure. And it is also a great honor to share this medal with Antonio Almagro, because Antonio Almagro, for us, in, he was our great teacher in those uh, workshops. He was quiet and calm, but he really marked the way for us to go forward. So it's a great honor for me to share a medal with uh, my dear professor, Antonio Almagro. Second, I would like to share this uh, medal with my colleagues from the foundation, Santa Maria del Marracin, without whom it would be impossible to take on the many restoration work or to welcome all of the groups that visit us very often, such as the architects who work in the area of restoration, Mr. Pedro Ponce de Leon and Miguel de Aro, 
who are members of uh, the team of the foundation. But a special word of thank, thanks has to go to the Board of Trustees of the foundation, without whom it would be impossible to continue with this calm and dedicated work of restoration. Thanks to the Board of Trustees of the Foundation, Santa Maria de Albarracín, the uh, Albarracín is the example that uh, it has become today. And I would like to uh, mention Santiago Lazuela and Manuel Pizarro, who were the uh, original players of this uh, decision or the uh, driving forces of this initiative and who have really made a great effort and work hard to make this reality to continue to be alive. Albarracín is located in the province of Teruel, deep in the heartland of Spain, which is increase, suffering the effects of depopulation, as you know, in the Deep in the heartland in Albarracín, we have uh, been able to generate a system that has completely turned around the sadness and the need to emigrate, created an alternative, an economic alternative which is crucial and makes Albarracín an example today, at least in Spain. So thank you very much for this incentive. We will always be indebted to you on behalf of the Foundation on behalf of Albarracín. Thank you very much. Finally, organ player Carmen Serrano will play the prelude of Offertorium No. 1 of Ilarion Eslava.
los premiados. Congratulations and thanks everyone. Meeting is now adjourned.